Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Brian Matthews. I am your host, and this is Psychologics. The San Francisco 49ers suspended radio analyst Tim Ryan for one game after he said on air that the Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson has an advantage in faking handoff because of his dark skin color with a dark football. He really is good at the fake Lamar Jackson, this guy. But when you consider his dark skin color with a dark football and a dark uniform, you cannot even see the thing. Now, Ryan said this on the San Francisco radio station, KNBR's Murphy Max show on Monday. Here's my question to you. Were Tim Ryan's comments disrespectful? Before I answer that question, let me provide you some content. According to Human Resources documents, harassment based on a hostile work environment, the kinds of jokes and comments you're facing is a form of illegal discrimination. People are most familiar with the sexual harassment cases, but harassment can be based on other protected characteristics as well, to include race. To cross the harassment line, workplace conduct must be unwelcome and it must be sufficiently severe or pervasive to change the terms and conditions of a victim's employment. The unwelcome requirement means simply that the conduct offended you and you didn't solicit or actively participate in it. So what does that make the NFL any different than a blue collar employment? Racial harassment is defined as under federal law. It is illegal to harass a person in any aspect of employment because of a person's race or color. Harassment can include racial slurs, offensively or derogatory remarks about a person's race or color or the display of racially offensive symbols. Now, last year, I don't remember hearing anything about the reigning MVP Patrick Mahomes gameplay in his color. Now, Lamar Jackson isn't the first African-American or black quarterback to be mobile. Funny thing is, many sports analysts are stating that these comments were made in a manner that were unprofessional, but not offensive. Now, it may not be offensive to them, but they're not speaking for me. I even heard that if he would have said on Monday Night Football, that we'd be having a whole different conversation altogether. So outside of reaching more people, what's the difference between what he said on the radio, which is still has a platform to reach a lot of people, than saying it on the air for Monday Night Football. And then they talked to Richard Sherman. I guess he's one of those people who, and he is, he has been termed a hothead and will speak his mind. So listen to what Richard Sherman had to say. Um, yeah, I know Tim personally, and, and um, I, I listened to the, to the dialogue and, and saw it written. Um, and honestly, I, I, I wasn't as outraged as everybody else. You know, I, I understand um, how it can be taken uh, under a certain context and be offensive to some. But if you're if you're saying, hey, this is a brown ball, they're wearing dark colors, and he has brown arm. Honestly, sometimes we, we were having trouble seeing it on film. You know, he's making a play fake, and, and sometimes he's swinging. Sorry, he's swinging his arm really fast, and you're like, okay, does he have the ball on that play? And then you look up, and Ingram's running it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a, it, it was technically a valid point, but I, you know, in the way he's, you know, you can always phrase things better. You can always mm-hmm. phrase things and, and not say his black skin, you know, but. Um, I've, I've had a relationship with him since I got here. He's never he's never been anything but a but a, but a great guy um, and a professional and, and a guy who takes his job seriously. So it's. I'm not saying that Tim Ryan is racist. What I am saying that he may have been a little too comfortable in his description. Now there's work conversation and then there's hanging out with your friends conversation. Now I realize when you're on a radio uh, program, sometimes it's like general conversation or just like this a podcast. But you have to always remember you're still in a professional situation or environment. Now, do I think white guys make jokes to the expense of other races? Yep, I sure do. As well as black, Hispanic, and Asian do the same. I mean, some things are socially acceptable, not necessarily responsible or even, I don't say practical, but this is the way we are when we're hanging with our friends and we're running off the mouth. So how do we designate a black quarterback who has a great pocket presence? Here's the thing. The color preconceptions are always present regardless of who or the position and when i say color i don't mean black so you're thinking i'm saying black or meaning black no i'm meaning all races that are represented in the nfl however there are some generalities that are forever present as well but i guess we don't make a big deal out of them right truth is truth no matter how it comes out now uh, back in january 17 1988, about 12 a.m., a Time staff writer in New York, uh, he had this to say. An embarrassed CBS fired a contrite Jimmy the Greek Snyder Saturday after the sports commentator said in a much-criticized television interview that blacks were bred to be better athletes than whites. 
In the interview, Snyder, whose remarks were termed reprehensible by CBS, said that the only sport realm in which whites now dominate is coaching. And if blacks take coaching as I think everyone wants them to, there's not going to be anything left for white people. So we have what's called the Rooney Rule. Have you heard of the Rooney Rule? Well, the Rooney Rule is a National Football League policy that requires leagues, teams to interview ethnic minority candidates for head coaching and senior football positions. Sometimes cited as an example of affirmation action or affirmative action as there is no quota or preference given to minorities in the hiring of candidates. As of December 31st, 2018, two of the 32 head coaches in the NFL are African-American with one Hispanic head coach. Uh, who's been recently fired, by the way. Uh, <laughs> recently, some legal scholars have advocated for extending the Rooney Rule to college football as well, where the number of minority head coaches hovers around 6%, well, below the 126 of the total U.S. population, which African-American, which is African-American, that is. You're probably saying, how did we get so far from Tim Ryan's comments to the Rooney Rule? And it's simple, impact versus intent. I had a similar conversation with a friend and he said that one of my podcasts, which did not actually offend him, but how some aspects of the podcast were laid out did. I told him intent was to inform, educate, and empower. The impact was negative to him because he felt that the comments reflected very negative towards white Republicans. His intent may not, meaning Tim Ryan that is, his intent may not have been to offend and to make light of the 48 or 49ers loss to the Ravens. Impact itself may not be an outrage to the community, offensive nonetheless. Yes, he made a public apology, very true, and it sounded very sincere, and I believe it probably is true and sincere. But his words, unfortunately, make the MVP season that Lamar Jackson is having down to these comments. So back to my original question. Were Tim Ryan's comments disrespectful? Hmm, I'll let you decide. Hey, this is Brian Matthews, and we are out.